bathed in morning light, they are powerful symbols, lasting evidence of a country's most notable events. C-17, the next gate down there. Thank you. The C-17. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. And these men are the few living monuments to America's most important wartime victory. We're going to Washington, D.C. in order to visit the World War II Memorial. How was the flight this morning? Real good, real good. It's sleepy though. There we go. Have a good trip. Thank you. Leaving Las Cruces at 3 in the morning on October 8, 2008, most of the 40 veterans getting the all-expenses-paid trip to see their World War II memorial for the first time needed some assistance. You're in 22 deep, huh? It came from relatives and guardians and an inner strength clearly visible 63 years after their war ended. These uh, gentlemen are all okay. kind of everybody's grandfather, everybody's father. So there's a real parental draw to them, I think, at this stage of their life. Tell you the truth, I was waking up every hour on the hour, <laughs> make sure I didn't miss the flight. Well, I get to thinking about some of my old buddies and friends that are not here anymore, and uh, I thank God that I, I'm still alive. Now, our time is over, but and, and I wish some of these younger people take up where we left off. Well, we're all uh, around 85 years old, and of course one of the requirements of the trip was that you'd never seen the memorial. So it gives us the opportunity in the last years of our life to, to go and visit the memorial. We would like to thank our World War II vets for coming today, so we thank you also. Arriving at Reagan National Airport in D.C., another hero's welcome awaited. You're going to make me cry here, all, all this welcome. That's what you call the Buzina camera. Real good. These guys were regular Navy. I was in reserve. I got out in 46 and left them in there got to finish the yeah, wife. I, I got out in 47. I did. That's when my hitch was up. Now we're on the Virginia side of the Potomac River. Uh, that's where uh, National Airport is, and that's also where your hotel is. The 12 hour trip from Las Cruces actually began in February when former Las Cruces Mayor Bill Matisse was asked to help organize and find sponsorship for the trip. I had just lost the uh, mayoral race, and they figured, well, there's an unemployed mayor. He probably has a lot of time. Uh, let's see if he'll do it. And I, I said yes. So we started it in uh, February uh, this year, and uh, it uh, culminated to a great trip of uh, 40 veterans. This is important for the legacy to go on. It's important for something to give it to the children and the grandchildren. I think it's wonderful. Okay. We moved up the uh, banquet until six six o'clock. You're looking at the flying tigers. <laughs> <laughs> They're flying pussy cats now. <laughs> this is the first time that we were all together, and then when they started to tell their stories, and some of the stories again had never been told before. So that was that broke the ice. Uh, let me just plain say plain and simple that broke the My, ice. I flew the B-24 over over Germany, and my wife was making B-24s in Fort Worth. <laughs> well, well and she, she, apparently she did a good job. We, we got them all back. When you guys did the interview with them, before that, we couldn't get them to talk. After you did the interview, now they're talking all the time. It's great that they talk about, they're sharing their experiences. What I'm really here for is to express my thankfulness of the opportunity to be here. Of my brothers and myself, three of us went into World War II. Only two came home. You fellas know what war is. You know what it is. It ain't easy. It's painful. It's miserable. We just stood and done it. And we had to do it. We've done it, 
and we're glad we did, and God bless you. And uh, I'm so glad that I was born and was able to do some things for you. I love all of you very much. Thank you. This has been one of the really great days of my life. And uh, thank you very much. I think it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in all my life. Uh, even the mayorship, council, you name it, uh, getting awards here and there. This is probably the biggest reward I could ever receive in my life. The National World War II Memorial honors the 16 million men and women who served in the armed forces. 400,000 Americans died in that conflict, and the few remaining survivors are dying at a rate of nearly 1,000 every day. For New Mexico veterans, the chance to see their memorial in the final days of their lives brings unspeakable joy. Extremely emotional. It's a true honor to be here. Want a picture under New Mexico? Yes, it really is. It's really something very beautiful, beautiful. Just one of these things, you know, before I die, I wanted to see it. Now I can go home, and if I croak, so what? I did it. It just brings back these memories of uh, comrades that are long gone, and uh, I'm not with them. I I'm here. Uh, must be raining. <laughs> Think about the people that I've known, the shipmates that I had, they're no longer with us. And the other friends that I've had, the guys that I grew up with in the Army and the Marines and the Navy, they're no longer here. It's great. I don't know, it breaks me up. That and the flag and patriotism, this really breaks me up. And I don't, you know, I, I don't have words for it. This is their last hurrah. For a lot of veterans, uh, they, they don't have reunions anymore. So for us to be able to get them out here to see America's thank you for their, their service and the incredible sacrifice of their friends uh, is so heartwarming. For many, this trip comes too late. Imagine waiting for this honor and dying one month before the trip. It is indeed an honor to dedicate this honor flight of Southern New Mexico to Samuel Lopez, one of our very own heroes. I'm just sorry my wife couldn't be here. She died about six months ago. Well, it has very special meaning for me primarily because one of those gold stars across the fountain belonged to my brother. He gave his all in the European theater, and it makes this very special to know that he, along with an awful lot of other people, gave everything they had for our freedom. And I am honored, honored to be able to make this trip with this group. Walking to the locations in the monument where their specific conflicts are memorialized, the old soldiers remembered stories they'd spent decades trying to forget. Bring back too many memories. Too many memories. And I had some very good friends that uh, are not here today. I lost two of my buddies, okay? You're, that hurt a lot. And a lot of things I thought, well, it wasn't my turn. But then next time I'd go in there, I'd think about it and say, well, maybe now is my time.
I flew the hump, the Himalaya mountains between India and China. We lost more people than they lost in the 8th Air Force in Europe. It was uh, high winds, really treacherous weather, the worst weather in the world for flying. And we had very few aids, you know, navigation aids. So uh, we lost a lot of people, a lot of friends. It took us 13 days to cross the ocean. And then when we got there, the German submarines were all over the cliffs of Dover. Florentino Castillo recalled the guilt of killing an enemy soldier. We slept for a whole month. I, I take a little nap and I wake up, you know, like a, I was nervous or something. So I, my sergeant had a little book of the prayers, you know, praying Catholic Church. So I. So I read the, my act of contraction and, oh, and then from then on, I sleep like a little baby. <laughs> and then I need a, a, a salute, everyone saluting. This is a thrill for me. I, I had never seen this monument right here. Okay, you guys, smile. Yeah. But it, it, it is really moving, it is, it is fantastic. Along with the battlefield epiphanies, the veterans also recalled some good times. On the way down in the PA system, they said, the war is over. They had dropped the bomb, and the ship, they got, you turn right away, back, going, they, got, they got their word that we went back to Hawaii. And you know, we didn't have liberty for about a year and a half on the island of Guam. And some of those Marines that came directly from the battlefields of Okinawa and Iwo Jima, Japan, uh, we took care of them. And they hadn't seen a woman maybe for a year, year and a half. And we didn't have any makeup. We never went on liberty. We would cut our own hair, never even have any lipstick. And when we would uh, bathe them or give them PM care or something, they would say, oh, gee, but you're beautiful. And there we were with no makeup or anything on. <laughs> oh, I saw you're a double dog. Pardon? You're a double dog. A devil dog, that's right. Jarhead, they called us. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, just, it's a jarhead that doesn't have any brains up here. I come from uh, New Mexico. I was born and raised in a ranch out here. And uh, the people out there in India, they, they didn't know what rodeos were. So a bunch of us guys from the west out here decided to have a rodeo. One of the most powerful moments came from two soldiers who fought in the legendary Battle of St. Lo, the U.S. Army's most difficult phase of the Normandy campaign in July 1944. So happened that this guy was the same battle, the same thing went through. He was, he was supporting my company when we were attacking St. Lo. West Texas, 29th Infantry, that's what he was in. I was in the 47, 747th Battalion. You can't put it into words. I mean, to, what, to see those two guys connect, the, um, the excitement, it was, it was amazing. I mean, it, it was, they did all but jump out, you know, Roy's in a wheelchair and did everything but jump out and grab each other, and uh, it, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> 60 years later, we find each other, old buddy. That's all news. I'm gonna come take you out. I'm going out and eat some bean burritos. <laughs> <laughs> now, be 